All right, so we're going to examine this trailer this morning, and it's from Dr. Stephen Finney. Let me turn this down for a second. So, Dr. Dr. Stephen R. Finney. Okay, now this is absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. And we're going to see here in a second, it's gonna, he's going to start talking. But I want you to notice here, the millennial reign of Christ. That's not found in the Bible. He doesn't show it anywhere. He can't. Because it's not in the Bible anywhere at all. But, you know, you got to admit the production of the video is fantastic, man. The imagery is excellent, right? Revelation chapter 20 introduces the glorious reign of Christ on this earth, which is known as the millennium. Now, let's... Uh, take the mystery out of the term millennium right. it is a latin word which is made up of two words the words mille which <laughs> mean a thousand right. and the word anum it's which the fact that it's a years. latin word mille, it should anum, make you a thousand years suspicious so right away a thousand years you notice here that the word is not chapter 20 is the only place in the bible anywhere where that actual word it actually appears. is not and it appears in the text six different times it actually zero if different times if you look times. down in your bibles you will notice in verse 2 it says he laid hold of the dragon that serpent of old who is the devil and thousand years. and bound him for a thousand years for a millennium verse 3 and the nations no more were deceived for a thousand years a millennium verse 4 and they that lived actually and reigned with christ a thousand years a millennium Verse 5, and the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years was finished. There it is again. Verse 6, over such the second Still death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and, there it's and not Christ again. and shall reign with him a millennium, a thousand years. But mille annum. A mille annum. Verse 7, now when the thousand years had expired, Satan will be released not a big from death. his prison. The millennium but. is a period of one thousand years. That is going to take place in the future. No. And it is a very important subject for okay. us to discuss. Now I need to tell you that there is no more subject in all of Bible prophecy that is more controversial than this one. Okay, that you know that that would that would be great actually. I, you know I would contend that it's there's not enough controversy, not enough discussion regarding this particular topic. Why? Well, because everybody, day after day, is putting out video after video, talking about this idea that Jesus reigns for a thousand years. In fact, it's not in the Bible anywhere. And that if it was, then the whole Bible would be an error. See, that's the problem. Right? You're basically saying you cannot trust what the Bible says. Right? If, if the Bible has a contradiction, you have to throw out the whole thing. Jesus himself says the scripture cannot be broken. And in the scripture it clearly says, And he, speaking of Jesus, shall reign over the house of Jacob, <clears throat> excuse me forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end he's talking about Jesus he reigns forever and there, of his kingdom there is no end so he can't reign a thousand years he reigns forever so anybody that says he reigns a thousand years is a liar. And if the Bible says he reigns a thousand years, then the Bible is a liar. It's a, because it's a contradiction with itself. And you notice when you actually read 
Revelation 20, it says, They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It doesn't say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It says they, talking about those of us that are born of the Spirit of God. So what's the controversy? There should be a controversy because all these guys are teaching it wrong. Why all the fuss? Well, there, I think there should be more fuss. Look at this. This is unbelievable. But they all got it wrong. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Buggy. Buggy Wuggy. Buggy. Buggy Wuggy. <clears throat> no. Doc, Dr. Stephen R. Thanny. He writes, Jesus Christ will physically to return. Physic. What? What is that? I don't know what that is. Physically, physically, to this earth. I mean, what is this guy? Ten years old. He will defeat his enemies, and there will be a battle that is fought. F a u, F a u g h t. Come on. Fight, fought, let's see. It's F O, isn't it? F F A, what are you? Ten years old? Or maybe he's a Scottish variant. <laughs> Come on, man, looks like a little kid. Like this. Hey look, I make I make mistakes too. No big deal. enough of this right here all right so notice he's got let's wait a second you know what let me do it this way let's go just by what he says here never mind the fact that the incorrect spelling okay Jesus Christ will physically return to this earth he will defeat his enemies and there will be a battle that is fought at the end the warning of that is weird okay he's gonna defeat his enemies and there's gonna be a battle that is fought at the end okay so I'm just assuming that what he means here is that at the end he will defeat his enemies weirded in a very strange way but whatever that's the only thing I can conclude from this that he's talking about the, at the end there will be a battle and Jesus will defeat his enemies and he will then set up his can we get rid of the boogie woogie music here he will then set up his kingdom on this earth And he will reign upon the earth for a thousand years. Okay, that's not in the Bible. All right. So here comes, here's the problem. Yeah, if you just read that, you know, you'd be, oh, okay. <laughs> the problem is this is completely contradictory to what Revelation 20 says. Dr. Stephen R. Finney He's a doctor, by the way. That means he's like an expert, right? Doesn't it? I'm not sure. Not a big deal, but 
boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, think about this. Okay, so Jesus returns. He defeats his enemies. There's just no way around it, man. There's no way around it. If he returns and he defeats his enemies when he returns, and you say he then sets up this thousand year reign, and you, so the, the assumption has to be that the enemy is destroyed. Therefore, all you have left are believers. Those of us that are saved, the saints of God, the people of God. That's all that's left because the enemy has been defeated. But then you see at the end of the thousand years, fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours who? The enemies of God? No, it can't be. Because Dr. Stephen Finney says that Jesus already defeated them. All right, well, where's this at? Where's this Jesus already defeated them? It's not there, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. It's not there, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. There it is. But this is at the end of the thousand years it's not at the beginning you, you see what I'm saying how do you get this wrong man how do you get this wrong are you basing your doctrine off of Hollywood movies is that what's happening because this doctrine fits perfectly with Hollywood movies it look I'll show it to you. Right here. I, I just took out the buggy woogie. Buggy woogie. Buggy woogie. Alright. There it is. So you got the Old Testament. And then you got the church. Wait. No idea what's going on over here. So we'll just call it the Old Testament. We really don't know what's going on here. So we'll call it the church. And then we'll just put in this word rapture right here. And you do realize that the rapture is the gathering together of the elect. And when we are gathered together, we are the wheat. And then those that are not the wheat but are the tares, they're gathered together also. And they are burned. Just like it says in Matthew 13. Right, the parable of the wheat and the tares. The harvest is the end of the world. This is the harvest. Man, how do you miss that? Seven years? That's not in the Bible either. I've been over that. I can't point to anywhere in the Bible it talks about this here. It's not anywhere at all. You got the rapture here, and then you got the second coming here. You, you see the problem there? I mean, really? Nobody reads the Bible here. I'm making this long. What happened? I'll make this real simple here, and then I'll have to shut it down because I get too long winded on this. I feel like I could spend an hour every time on this. Now, we read in Matthew 24, there shall appear a sign in. The heavens, right? Immediately after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. What's interesting here in Luke's account, Luke says that men's hearts will be, will fail will be uh, will fail them for fear for what is coming on 
for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Right? This is the same moment in time. All right, so if you are a believer, you really got nothing at all to worry about. So it's not really that's not really applied to believers. This is unbelievers because they know that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. When we are raptured, it is the end of the world. Right? The and when the rapture happens, that's the second coming of Christ. So what is this here? What's going on there? Huh? That's not in the Bible anywhere. Did anybody even challenge this guy? I mean, if this guy is part of a church and a ministry and all that, isn't there anybody that he works with that has any sense whatsoever? Or are these guys all deliberately lying? What's going on here? Really? Because this, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. You know, you can't get around it. This is when Jesus comes, coming, the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. And you go to Revelation 1, for example. I mean, you really got this all throughout the Bible. Behold! something happens oh he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him all the kindred is this not going to be like the Hollywood movie where people just disappear and nobody knows what the hell's going on hey where'd George go anybody seen George no no that's not what's going to happen. It's going to be absolutely no doubt about it. Everybody's going to know. And everybody that is not saved is going to freak out, man. They're going to freak out. They're going to lose it. They're going to weep and they're going to wail. And there are going to be men whose hearts fail them. Or they're going to have heart attacks. The people are going to freak out. There's going to be no question about what is happening when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Now what is this? The rapture? This is Hollywood. This They're getting all their doctrine from a Hollywood movie. The Left Behind. All right. Where's, anybody seen George? George around? You've seen George and Ray? I mean, come on, really? It's completely contradictory to what we read in the Bible. I got to show you this first, man. Let's see. It says something about something. Let's see what it says here. What can we find here? First Thessalonians 4. It says something. Let's see. What it says here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. What's this say here? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, when they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. And the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Are you not able to put the two together? Anybody seen George? I mean, really. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that, that's the second coming, buddy. That's the second coming. We are raptured at the second coming. What are you going to say, man? 
what th this is the third coming or something or this is there's another he's gonna come and then he's gonna come again after he's gonna be two second comings is that what you're that was his first coming right there well, what happened over here I don't know about that I mean really is it's not complicated man this is not rocket science but for whatever reason people don't care about the truth they want to watch Hollywood and learn from Hollywood by watching Hollywood movies I mean how great is that <clears throat> right they don't just turn on the tube turn on the boob tube and the boob tube tell you everything you need to know All right. well let me go over this real quickly, okay? And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit. I and mean, this is how simple it is, <clears throat> all right? And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain was in his hand. This is an angel coming to ch um, appearing to John, showing him, just like what we read in Revelation 1. It's The angel has given John a vision. All right, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, when did this happen? This happened when Jesus said, The nation of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits thereof. All right, so I probably shouldn't do this, but I got to do this because I know people are going to question Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Alright, so, um, so, this is when Satan was bound. Alright, so, you have to go, <laughs> if you understand the Old Testament, how the children of Israel were gathered among one group of people outside of the children of Israel the children of Israel is the nation of God All right, outside of that nation of God were nations led by Satan All right, and they were always constantly coming against the children of God now here comes Jesus and he says the nation of God shall be taken or the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ all right so anybody can be a part of this nation this nation is scattered all throughout the world all right it's no longer in one group, one country, what have you, one nation, one group of people. It is so therefore when this happens, Satan can no longer deceive the nations, okay? That completely changed. Is that really that hard to understand? Man, I just wonder I Maybe I should talk to more people about this so that I can make it simpler and easier to understand and simpler and easier to teach. But it's really not that complicated. You got one circle of people, and then Jesus comes, and now that circle is broken, and the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes. And because of that, Satan is bound for a thousand years, okay? cast in the bottomless pit shut up and a seal set upon him that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season all right keep that in mind don't forget about that and I saw thrones okay and I saw thrones and who is sitting on the thrones um, that's a, you know that would be a great question first of all you know, I'd like to go here and show you something. Um, maybe I'll put this on the back burner for now. All right, and I'll go over here and 
Oops. Oops, 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 oops. Right there. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get right back to this one. Hold on a second. Here, I'm trying to think of something. Here, let's just do it this way. We could go back to Revelation 1. You know, we could go to Revelation 5 too, I guess. But uh, Revelation 1, right there. And has made us kings and priests unto God. And has made us kings and has made us kings and I saw thrones <laughs> yeah, there it is and they that sat on them man talking about us we are kings and priests unto God and it's fine. What, what do you think this meant? really and judgment was given unto them all right, so when we are born of the Spirit of God, judgment has already been given to us. We're saved forever. Saved, secure, sealed, sanctified forever. All right, so when the end of the world comes, there's no judgment there to be made on us because that judgment has already been given to us and that judgment is eternal life and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years now if you are not born of the spirit of God then by default do you worship the beast all right and you carry his number and all that sort of stuff all right so if you are born of the spirit of god you don't have anything to worry about all right nothing at all don't you know don't freak out about you know microchips and all that weird stuff okay so the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection all right so we are partakers of the resurrection of jesus christ he is the first resurrection and we are partakers of his resurrection because we are partakers of his resurrection we are born of the spirit of god we are, await his return Blessed and holy is he that are partakers, or that has part in the first resurrection. Is that complicated? You connect the dots to what you're reading and what you know is happening. I mean, if you're born of the Spirit of God, you ought to know that you are a partaker of his resurrection. It's not confusing at all on such the second death has no power if you're born of the Spirit of God ye shall never die whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believest thou this if you're born of the Spirit of God the second death has no power over you right now blessed or I'm sorry Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such that the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. First Peter. You realize that's Exodus 19, right? First Peter, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Right now, we are the children of God. Right now, we are the people of God, which in time past were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but have now obtained mercy. 
Right. Are you able to connect the dots here? And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now let's go back. Remember to the Old Testament when there was a group, a circle of people that were the nation of God? All right. So now that circle is going to be... Um, it's going to be, uh, how do you say that? It, the circle is going to come back together, right? It's going to be a circle again, but it's going to be different. All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, all his people will be gathered together, right? Just like what we read in First Thessalonians 4, you know, Matthew uh, 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Um the people of God are lifted up. We are lifted. We are resurrected. We are lifted. First the dead in Christ. Then those of us which are alive and remain. You remember that verse? Alright, so we're up in the air with the Lord Jesus. We are now, once again, gathered into one group of people. Get it? And so now Satan is loosed out of his prison. And what's he do? He goes out to deceive the nations. That has to mean people. That has to mean people, right? So he's going out to deceive the nations from all around the world. Alright. To gather them to battle. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And when they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. The beloved city is New Jerusalem, which is above. Right? So this is what Satan does. He gathers together the unsaved to come against God. Right? It's really the same thing he was doing in the Old Testament, really. Yeah, you could say that's what uh, is happening now uh, in the sense that Satan is always trying to attack us. Okay, that's fine. But it's not like it was in the Old Testament. And it's certainly not what it's going to be like when we are up in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet. All right, so let's go back. Hold on a second. Uh, oops. Genesis 3, verse 15. All right. So I'm, I'm making a short story long. But here we go. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right? So this is a prophecy that is fulfilled at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this stuff is absolute pure nonsense. Just absolute nonsense. I mean, it's as if these guys have no idea what's going on. But I'm sure they're making money off of something. I guarantee you that. Now, really, so when this happens, you know, look, man. When this happens, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is when we are up in the air with the Lord, and he stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever and you, let's go to psalm uh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh i can't spell see i'm just as bad as dr stephen finney penny whatever his name is the lord said unto my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool right so we're up in the air and jesus stomps his foot on the enemy destroying it forever you see the connection there? Now we'll go to Revelation 3. And we see here, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. And again, Satan gathers the nations together and they compass the camp of the saints about. They are on the earth and we are up in the air with the Lord. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. What do you think? We're, we're on earth and we're surrounded by 
God is sending fire all around us or something? I, I mean, what do you think this means? We're up in the air with the Lord when this happens. But who do you think God is? You think there's Jesus and then there's another God? No, it's Jesus Christ. He comes in the clouds of heaven. He's the one that stomps on the foot. Um, he stomps his foot, excuse me, on the head of the serpent. Hey, look at this. Have you never seen this before? Where am I at here? There it is. All right, I will put enmity between thee, talking about the serpent, and the woman. All right, talking about Eve. And between thy seed, which is the serpent seed, and her seed, which is the seed of the woman. Now, hold on a second. There's only been one man that has ever been born by just a woman. In other words, Jesus had no physical, earthly father. Mary was a virgin. Get it? So who is going to bruise the head of the serpent? Whose heel is going to be bruised because he's stomping so hard on the head of the serpent. So therefore, when fire comes down from who? Out of heaven and devours them. Oh, you put two and two together, man. Connect the dots. This here, the seed of the woman, is Jesus Christ. Revelation 20, this here, God, is Jesus Christ. All right, and then what's... Have we not read any? Have we not just anybody figured anything out? God was manifest in the flesh. I thought it said that somewhere. Where am I at here? And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Who? God was manifest in the flesh. So when fire comes down from God, it's not Jesus in the flesh because he already died, resurrected, and ascended to heaven and has promised to return for us. And when, when he returns for us, that's when he stomps on the head of the serpent. Anybody getting this? And this is consistent all through. This message is consistent all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. This really is simple stuff, man. This is not the confusing. It It is meatier than the simple doctrine of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's heavier and takes more study. I, I get, I'll give you that. But it's really not that complicated. And the devil that deceived him was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are and they were tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Keep in mind this is not a different uh, when it says here fire come down from God and then the one that sits on the throne it's not like that's, there's one God and then there's another God and then we'll see a third God and a fourth God I mean come on I really do think people are trying to I just wonder are people intentionally stupid or are they just genuine, genuinely stupid because the one that sits on the great white throne it's Jesus when fire comes down from God that's Jesus it's coming down from Jesus alright shouldn't be any mistake about that so let's go real quickly since we're already going long let's go to well let's go to Mark 13 so we went to Matthew 24 Luke 21 it's all saying the same thing 
right? Because Jesus is asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The end of the world. And it's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that it is the end of the world. And you notice here, the stars of heaven shall fall, right? The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. This parallels what we're reading right here. From whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. This parallel. It's the same thing, the same moment in time. All you have to do is connect the dots, man. Really, and, I, and this is judgment. I saw... The dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead will judge out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire, and this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire all right so if you have any quest or any um, you know confusion or doubts or whatever you think of our life think of your life as a book all right and you think of somebody else and you their life is a book all right and we each have our own life and our own life is a book now Jesus also has a book his book which is the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. Let's see if I can find... Um, do I don't know where this is at. Right there. Okay, so we read about that in Revelation 13 as well. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the Book of Life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world so let's go to revelation 21 right and go all the way down here. and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the lambs book of life so let's go back here to Revelation 20 now if you're born of the Spirit of God that means Jesus abides in you and you abide in him that means you're in the Lamb's book of life right so your book and his book are intertwined you have everlasting life Nothing can ever take that away, no matter what the devil says. All right, the devil will come at you all the time, day after day, trying to get you to doubt your salvation because he's against God and he can't do nothing about you, but he can persuade his own from joining our side right so uh, if the devil can uh, be successful in his um, persuading people that if uh, they believe well look at them dumb Christians they're not saved they think they're saved but they're not saved because if they sin they lose their salvation if you could lose your salvation, then you're not saved. And so what's the point? I'll just go on being a super monkey. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Right? I mean, come on. Stop listening to what the devil says. It doesn't matter. All right? Just listen to what God says. All right? And these people here, to me... It looks like they're getting all their doctrine, all their information from a Hollywood movie. Seriously. Because they're not getting it from Revelation 20. Not at all. Alright, that's long enough. If you made it this far, thanks, man, thanks.